Hi, I'm Ricky. And I'm Lucy. And this is our first in a series of how to on our 2019 290 SDX Sea Ray. We are going to show you the boat, all its great features that it has, and also show you some things that uh, you may have already dealt with as far as problems go and how to fix them. So we will get to that right away. Here we go, Lucy. Good, Ricky. Okay, at first glance at the bow of the boat, we have the windless anchor, stainless steel. We have the docking lights, which we don't use very often because we do not travel at night. And then as I go along through here, well, there's Lucy up there looking. Okay, uh, we have the Bimini top, which is canvas. Very nice to have though, and uh, we really enjoy it. Then we come on around the boat. The boat is dry docked, by the way. That's how we keep it here in Florida. And we come back on around uh, to the engines. It, it came equipped with the twin 250 Mercury Verados outboards, which are great engines to have, a, a must if you live in Florida. And coming on around here, you can see what they look like from the back and they, it has twin four blade props. And uh, then there's a swim platform and uh, the back seat, which I'll show you adjustments on it uh, in a little bit. But uh, that's what it looks like to start with. There you see the compartment that raises. There is a button we pull over here and that raises the lid on that side. This whole thing pops up, but uh, I'll show you that later. You have the transom shower, which is located back here near the transom. And the purpose for it is wash down. Uh, I use it to wash off the engines when I come back from uh, being out on the water to uh, get the salt off of them. And uh, there's a nice picture of Lucy. It's very handy having that wash down back here. Next, you see there the helm. And this is a very nice, uh, helm with the instrument panel. It has the digital dash and with it is the navigation system which we truly love and uh, it has uh, the control for the windless anchor, the water, all the controls are right there on the dash and uh, there is the digital throttle system DTS which is very nice. Never had that before on a boat and there's our two-way radio that uh, we added when we bought the boat. Didn't come with that. Uh, Right below the throttle system is the joystick, and uh, that was a $25,000 option. I'm not sure that uh, uh, Lucy and I would have opted for that if we were ordering the boat, but it came with it, and we love it. And for resale, I understand you need that. Also on the joystick is another feature we truly love. It's called Skyhook, and uh, uh, by the way, this is all GPS controlled, and uh, the skyhook is a nice feature that when we are out somewhere on the water and we need the boat to stay in place without anchoring, it'll stay within 10 feet uh, after we push the button uh, and it will not move more than 10 feet regardless of wind, current, or anything else. And we love that feature. We don't use it too much uh, like we did when we first bought the boat, but we do love the feature. And so, uh, that, that is the helm. This is the head area of the boat with the vacuum flush toilet, uh, which has the duck bill valves in there. I just love hearing those things work. We don't use a toilet that often, but we do check it each time we come to the boat to make sure there's water in there. And it's a great toilet. It is pump out. Uh, and over here is our sink. And the sink has a faucet for, that goes into the sink. And it's got a pull out. This is the head area of the boat with the vacuum flush toilet, uh, which has the duck bill valves in there. I just love hearing those things work. We don't use a toilet that often, but we do check it each time we come to the boat to make sure there's water in there. And it's a great toilet. It is pump out. Uh, and over here is our sink. And the sink has a faucet for, that goes into the sink. And it's got a pull out. 
nice pullout could be used for washing things down in the head, even showering if a person wanted to. It's only cold water, there's no hot water, but on a day like this, it would feel like this. Talking. This is the seat at the helm. You can see a nice roomy seat and watch this. It has a bolster that I use all the time. I sit on that and puts me elevated so I can see out better as I navigate. Okay, I uh, put the bolster back down. Let's show our next feature. The back of the seat goes forward and it gives a larger seating area for passengers on the boat. You can't have it like that when you're navigating though. It has to be back. Now I'm out on the bow and uh, you can see uh, the starboard seat out here. Uh, this, they both have armrests, both seats do. Uh, this one is up and this one is down. They make nice seating areas for passengers, uh, whether we're navigating or just sitting like we're doing right now. Now, I'll show you the anchor compartment where all the line goes. Uh, it does have a, a 20 foot chain on the anchor, which is important to hold the anchor down uh, when you're anchoring. So that's the way it looks. And over here, then you see Lucy pulling out another wash down. Can you believe all these wash downs on this boat? That was very handy when you're pulling the anchor up to spray and clean off the line all the way back. In addition uh, to other things being stored, there are two tables and supports to store in this area. Here's an additional storage compartment uh, on this Sea Ray. And uh, it has the uh, breakers and uh, all the wiring that goes with it. Uh, the stereo amp is also in there, which is a little difficult to get to Jeez. unless you're the size of Lucy. But it's a nice, nice area. As shown here, one of the tables is erected. So you can see it's a nice size table and how it uh, is supported there uh, on the uh, side. Next uh, item I want to describe is the stereo system on this boat. It's a fusion. Everything is fusion. This is the source unit, which is uh, pretty nice. In the storage area is the amp for the stereo system and uh, it uh, I believe is 80 watts per channel and uh, it's not bad and it's hard to get to unless you're about the size of Lucy so uh, something to keep in mind if you're going to change it out. Uh, underneath the helm seat is the subwoofer which is also fusion and uh, uh, as I said, I replaced everything, so I replaced it as well. Didn't do it myself, but uh, I put in a different one. It sounds so much better now, at least to my ears. Replacing the stereo system, I replaced everything except the source unit. And I feel like Fusion made a good source unit, so that's why I did not change it. It's actually better than the JL Audio source unit that we had on our last boat. So I like the Fusion better in that aspect. Battery compartment. As you can see, there's three batteries. The starting battery, uh, for each engine and then the house battery which uh, controls uh, everything else the stereo system the lights the whole works uh, controlled there by the house battery also in here is the battery charger it is a, a Nautic 30 amp 12 volt battery charger uh, not bad it charges like a trickle charger uh, when it's used and uh, because of uh, the battery charger. More importantly, this refrigerator, this uh, uh, Dometic uh, 12 volt, 110 volt refrigerator, there's a 30 amp uh, charging cord that came with this, a shore power cord. So I'm going to talk now about that and the refrigerator, which uh, you may or may not have a problem with yours on your boat. All right, this refrigerator runs off the battery, the house battery and it runs off uh, 110 AC, which is supplied by the shore power cord. At least it runs that way now. It did not work like that when we bought the boat, which I'm going to get into now and explain how all this uh, uh, was fixed and uh, yours may not be fixed at this point. Here's the refrigerator opened. And as you can see, this is how we use our refrigerator now. Uh, on this boat. At a later date, I will show you how this uh, uh, cord plugs into the refrigerator and then plugs into the outlet and makes it complete because then when you turn your battery selector off, 
the refrigerator kicks over to AC and it continues to work without affecting the battery whatsoever. So now, if you live in Florida and have a boat like this without boards uh, and a refrigerator, there's a good chance that you have the same problem if you have a 290 SDX Sea Ray. Now, if you live in the north, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Northeast, uh, uh, you might have already uh, 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 found this problem because you may have your boat in a slip on a lift plugged into shore power and uh, your refrigerator is only running off the battery because there's no cord going to it. So that is the, one of the biggest problems that we experienced here and we were able to find it and fix it ourselves so it's not a problem anymore. And I'm under the sink here. There are, there's a, a door that opens. You see that outlet there? That is where the refrigerator plugs in if you have an AC cord. This boat did not come with an AC cord and we found out the hard way what happens if it only runs off DC, the battery. So uh, uh, we were using the refrigerator quite a bit when we first bought it. We were in a slip with a lift and uh, uh, it was plugged in all the time uh, and uh, the charger was charging the battery. What I didn't realize at the time was that you, as I told you earlier, the battery selector needs to be turned off when uh, you leave the boat. Well, we would do that early on. It was hooked up to shore power. But when I would turn off the battery selector, the refrigerator would go off. So realizing that it was not gonna cool while we were gone, uh, and I didn't realize the big problem for quite a while. So uh, I was gonna have friends on the boat and uh, decided I wanted drinks to be cold when we all arrived on this particular Tuesday. So uh, when uh, Lucy and I left the boat the week before, I left the battery selector on, the refrigerator on, and uh, put drinks in there. And I'm thinking, wow, it's gonna be great when I have my friends down. So came to the boat the next Tuesday and went to, uh, uh, I turned on everything, the battery was dead that refrigerator ran the battery down. Uh, that charger is not nearly fast enough or strong enough to keep up with the refrigerator charging. I don't know if you can see all these love bugs circling me now, but we are in the love bug season in May here in Florida. As my story goes, uh, wondering what those outlets were for on the boat and uh, why nothing was uh, be, uh, using either one of them, uh, and the refrigerator was causing us a problem uh, Lucy and I pulled the refrigerator out and quickly realized that uh, uh, there's no AC cord on it. So there was nothing plugged in where, the, where it should be. And so uh, uh, I proceeded then to contact uh, uh, the dealership and uh, they were not aware that this uh, refrigerator did not come with an AC cord. So then I contacted C Ray in Knoxville explained the problem to them and uh, they also well they said that it is a, a customer option an ac cord a customer option this is the ac cord it's just a plain three-prong plug it plugs into a port at one end and to the outlet there at the other end what lucy's holding and i think i paid ten dollars for this at amazon and uh, plugged it in refrigerator works like a charm now but uh, for some reason, C-Ray did not see that as a necessity. And to make it worse, I called Dometic, and uh, they're very hard to reach. They must have a lot of issues that they're dealing with because uh, they also said that that cord was a customer option. Now, I could not believe this. An AC-DC refrigerator that did not come with an AC cord, you had to buy extra. And I guarantee you, if you bought it from either the refrigerator company or C-Ray, you would not buy it for $10.